Hey YouTube, we'll try this again. Down here in my messy basement, uh, uh, this is my rock working setup, but that's not what we're doing a video about. Uh, today's video is about uh, mid drive versus hub drive. Uh, I, I will show you a rock I recently polished. And I'll have to stand up and get behind the camera and make sure you can see it. I'm not sure what I'm going to use it for, but we'll f worry about that uh, when I... Uh, this is a uh, Lake Superior Agate, if you're wondering what it is. Um, I have it on a, a, a glue dab, it's, so it's a cab at this point. Back of it isn't flat, but it's a. Uh, it is what it is. It's not ready to mount, but it's fully polished. Uh, and I have a rock saw for cutting rocks. Uh, they're all Cab King and High Tech are all owned by the same company. Uh, pretty qual good quality stuff. Some people would disagree, but in my case, I think it's what I need and then I have a jewelry polishing buffer here that I use to finish them with and then my met it's a messy messy process but it's what it is so hub drives versus mid drives maintenance cost uh cost of ownership uh, all this being said uh, hub drive versus mid drive, the co uh, cost per mile is going to be really a lot different than what most people think. The mid drive bike is the most expensive of the two it, my, cost per mile in just maintenance costs. We're not talking bike costs. Maintenance cost uh, for the 2,300 miles I have on the bike, it's probably even a little more than that. It has, it's actually, yeah, 2,500 miles now. I have spent well in excess of $300 in just maintenance cost. Uh, I didn't have to pay for the rear tire that I had to change at 2,000 miles, but uh, so we can't really include that. Uh, the electric bike, uh, the electric XP hub drive bike. I've had to put uh, three rear tires on it, but one of them was just, def one set was defective, so we're not going to count that. Manufacturer did not stand behind the product, so uh, it's a long conversation, uh, but let's just put it this way. They did not stand behind the product. They send you a set of tires that is uh, dry rotted already. And then you're going, you tell them about it, and instead of offering to replace them, they just ignore you. Uh, gives you an idea what kind of company you're dealing with. Uh, so, two sets of tires, uh, really just two rear tires. Uh, I re cost me fifty dollars. Um, I had to put on new brake pads. That was ten bucks for the set. Uh, semi-metallic brake pads because that's what those rotors are set up to use and then uh, the chain uh, $16 I think it's a 116 link chain if you're wondering how many links you need for your uh, electric uh, we have a guy on the channel that got 12,000 miles out of his chain and uh, free free wheel I change mine by uh, how how uh, far it's elongated, um, and, and I have a chain checker for both bikes. And I change it when it's time to change. I change it because in my situation, I cannot afford to have a broken chain out in the middle of nowhere, uh, too far to walk from for me. And those that know me, because of my ankles, I do not walk any farther than I have to. Uh, I wouldn't have the option to ride a regular bike if it, because of my ankles. Uh, so, I have spent 
a total of maybe in just straight maintenance items on the uh, electric hub drive bike of 70 to 80 dollars the prices fluctuate so hard so much it's hard to tell you um on my trek mid drive bike i've spent 280 dollars so far and most of it's come in the last few months um so uh the, i had to replace the chain i replaced the chain the bike wouldn't shift right and it it was skipping what it was doing is i put any pressure on the pedal it, it, the chain would skip on the back cassette and that is dead giveaway that the cassette is stretched and is no longer usable part of the issue is i was running a 11 to 36 tooth cassette that wasn't appropriate for the situation i ride in otherwise i was using just two gears all the time and what's the point of how i might as well just have a three speed if i'm only going to use two gears all the time so when I when I figured out that the cassette was wore out, I put a more appropriate 11 to 28 tooth. Uh, 28 tooth is good enough for to climb any hill. And now I use, let's see, I use 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th. So I'm using 5, 6 gears out of, uh, well, 5 gears out of the nine that are available all the time uh, i re if i go up a hill i switch into tw the 28 tooth you know so i use that once in a while but not in this area just once in a blue moon just depends on the route i just see it decide to ride whether i'm going to get in that gear uh, so i'm spreading the wear over more teeth in the c cassette so it should last longer um I'm not going to change the chain and when it's wore out, I'm just going to ride it until it finally starts to skip gears or uh, the chain doesn't mate to the cassette well anymore and then I'll change it. Whatever miles it's at, it's, I'm just going to ignore the fact that chain is completely wore out. And then I know the next time that I can replace the chain and the cassette at the time, same time, and I don't need to overbuy and spend 50 bucks on a uh, e-bike chain. It's not worth the money. You're wasting your money if you're buying an e-bike chain. The durability of a standard chain is going to be fine for a low-powered mid-drive bike like mine. So don't buy, don't spend the money and buy something that's e-bike specific thinking that you're going to get 50% more wear at most, most people are saying they get another 300 or 400 miles out of the, out of the e-bike chain that they it doesn't twice the cost at least twice sometimes three times the cost for that chain to get the next or 300 miles so don't waste your money unless you're running a bosch mid drive with 85 newton meters of torque don't waste your money on e-bike stuff um standard mileage that most people who ride in rough conditions and really test their bike is a thousand miles is all they get out of this cassette in the chain so if you're worried about durability and longevity the hub drive is going to be the way to go there is exceptions to that you cannot ride a hub drive in hilly hilly terrain where you have climbs over a mile long uh, the hub drive will heat up and you'll burn it out eventually if you if you don't pay attention to how hot that motor is you will lose that motor over time and uh, then you're talking about spending three or four hundred dollars to replace the motor part of your wheel if you have that option sometimes they you just won't be able to find the part uh, so you're basically rebuilding the hub motor if you burn it out uh, or if you overheat it and the uh, hall sensors become disabled there's three of them and most of them and the hall sensors measure the speed of the wheel so uh, that being said hub drive is the cheapest option for most people it's going to require the least amount of maintenance uh, 
and it's going to last you the longest period of time without having to spend large amounts of money. I just wanted to do a short video, it's probably eight minutes or so, and uh, let you guys know this is where I spend most of my time in the winter time uh, when I can't ride my bike and polishing rocks. Uh, I got a couple of them done uh, yesterday. Uh, I'm going to start making jewelry. This is uh, called a Leland Blue. It is slide glass from the 18 and 1900s when Michigan used to be one of the iron capital of the world, basically. So this slide glass is formed from uh, the, the process, iron process, and it was colored because it, they used wood charcoal to fire their uh, smelting pots or their iron pots. Uh, in its raw form, it looks kind of like this. Uh, now, I will make this into a shape like this one and polish it and uh, put it in jewelry. Uh, really expensive stuff to put in jewelry. People spend outrageous amount of money to buy this stuff. Uh, but this is a Petoskey stone. This is the best Petoskey stone for jewelry I have. Uh, wonderful, wonderful stone. I can't wait to put this in some kind of jewelry and, and uh, sell it. I probably won't keep any of it since I don't wear jewelry. I don't even wear a wedding ring. Uh, uh, I don't have a Petoskey stone up here. This is what a uh, a typical uh, agate looks like when it's in its raw form. Is This has been cleaned. So, got bags of them around here whole bag there, a couple bags down there. Uh, you'll see some videos of me polishing stones. It's a pretty boring process to watch, but if you have any questions about stonework, rocking, rock hounding, or what I cover in this video about hub drives, the long and the short of it is the hub drives the cheapest, cheapest maintenance cost, period. Uh, like, subscribe. If you have any questions, put them in the comments.